Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now we're going to start out tonight with the Bitfinex Bitcoin chart. And if you haven't heard the news, basically the story that we're getting, I'm not going to say the truth of the matter, but the story that we're getting is that Bitfinex was hacked. Uh, I have some serious doubts about that that have to do with multi-signature wallet protection and just the protections that are available out there now. Uh, I have some serious doubts as to whether we're being told the truth, but the bottom line of the whole thing is that Bitfinex has announced a 36% bail-in. Now, what that means is that everybody who had coins on their exchange has lost 36% of the value of their accounts across the board. Uh, and people can debate whether that's fair or not and go into the facts of the hack and they're kind of doing what Cripsy did where they're offering a reward or ransom for the hackers, but uh, I, I don't believe the story. I, I don't think that's what's going on. I think there's a much, much deeper agenda behind this whole thing and that's pretty much what this video is gonna be about. Now, the line that I've drawn on here is the equivalent Bitcoin price of a 36% haircut from where we are right now. So if you uh, had your all of your cryptocurrencies, uh, basically Bitcoin, because Bitfinex doesn't trade a large amount of alternative cryptocurrencies. It's primarily the big... Uh, uh, thing that was introduced by Bitfinex was the ability to trade futures uh, short, uh, and short and long. In other words, to leverage it. Uh, they they were one of the first ones to to make the foray into a serious attempt to create a platform where you can short Bitcoin. And we're going to read a story here about a trader who who got soaked on this this deal. But uh, so this this line down here at the bottom, this is the equivalent price of where you would where your bitcoins would be priced at, what your bitcoins would be worth right now, if you had everything on Bitfinex. And you can see that price is down around three hundred and sixty five, three hundred seventy dollars, with a haircut, which has essentially wiped out all of the gains of most of this spike and this entire run up. So it's very interesting that they took away all of those gains. And that really, I think, ultimately is going to be the answer to just about all of these stories and all of these markets. They really intend to steal everything. That's what I think is the master plan. And we're going to talk about why they want to do that a little bit later. But let's go over to the story from... Uh, Hong Kong and the trader who lost his money on there. This is Bitcoin traders made 700% returns before losing millions in hack attack. For years, Tian Jia made the kind of returns on his money that investors in the rest of the world could only dream of. The 29-year-old Beijing-based programmer had $440,000 on deposit at the Hong Kong Bitcoin exchange Bitfinex until last week and on good days would wake up to find a couple thousand more dollars in his account than when he went to sleep. The earnings came from lending his dollars to traders who wanted to leverage their bets. That's interesting that they would right there lending his dollars to traders. No, he wasn't lending his dollars to traders. He was lending his Bitcoin to traders. The exchange allowed lenders like Tian to set their own rates, and he says margin traders paid as much as 700% annualized interest to borrow dollars. I, I don't believe that they were actually borrowing dollars, but that's a technicality. At times, he earned as much in one day as holders of U.S. treasuries can earn in a decade. Quote, the returns were really great, Tian said. Bitfinex was quite innovative and among the first to come out with products including margin lending. That lucrative practice came to a stunning halt last week after Bitfinex said it was hacked for 119,000 bitcoins worth about $70 million at current prices. While his U.S. dollars were not stolen, Tian is being forced to forfeit 36% of his deposit, about $160,000, 
as part of a rescue plan the exchange is imposing on all its customers. He said that will more than wipe out the profits he made through lending money. Bitfinex, which was the largest Bitcoin exchange for U.S. dollar trading prior to the attack, says leaning on its users to cover the loss is the best way to avoid insolvency that would tie up deposits with legal proceedings for years. Now that's very interesting because that may be the exact argument that they're going to use when they do bank bail-ins. Let's just do this, everybody gets a haircut, and then we start over. The exchange hopes to repay the lost money. Customers are receiving tokens that Bitfinex says will one day be redeemable for shares in its parent company. Sound a lot more like a bail-in where you own the bank, which would give its customers a stake in future profits. Zane Tackett, a director at Bitfinex, said the exchange is also offering to pay anyone who helps recover the Bitcoins a reward of 5% of the money, a bounty that could lead to a total of more than $3 million. So, yeah. I, I don't believe any of that story. Uh, that's really shady stuff. So think about the lessons, though, that, that one would learn from that. And one of the lessons you would think that people would learn from that sort of thing is to not trust an exchange that doesn't have the ability to protect your coins. But apparently not. Now, this is WorldCoin Index's page on the exchange volumes and this is one that I watch fairly frequently because it tells me what the dollar volume is on various exchanges and you can see this is today's and uh, we've got OKCoin, OK Huobi and BTC China up at the top there and that's the Chinese volume. We've already discussed whether that's accurate or whether the Chinese inflate their numbers. I tend to believe it's probably accurate but nevertheless you can see that uh, we don't even have Bitfinex in the top five. We have Bitfinex all the way down at number seven, doing about $7.7 .7 million of trading after this 36% haircut. Now, what's the logic behind that? And why would anybody trust them after they just did a 36% haircut? Well, maybe a couple of reasons. And maybe some people think, well, uh, they just did the haircut that uh, probably won't happen again in the near future so I'll go ahead and drop some Bitcoin on there and start trading. I don't really know what people could be thinking but that is a fairly significant drop. Now I try to document that drop by just going over to the Wayback Machine which as I pointed out many times in the past is a suspiciously unreliable operation. And I don't put a lot of trust in webarchive.org. Uh, there should be many, many sites out on the internet that thoroughly document all existing content on the internet. Uh, I haven't done a video on the Mandela effect, but I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that. I personally believe it's mostly nonsense. But certainly if somebody wanted to prove something like that, the first thing you would want to have is a historical record and the Wayback Machine has been very unreliable in its ability to provide a decent historical record of what actually was on the internet in the past. Now you can see here I've gone back to 2015 because there's actually only one date August 6th for 2016, which happened to be a time period when Bitfinex was shut down, so I couldn't get the data. But you can see the data from the fall, from the fall of 2015, the volume, and you can see that uh, Bitfinex here is number four at 14 million. Now it was much, much higher because it really hadn't moved into its own. Uh, uh, but even more interesting than that is where I have a lot of coins deposited and probably tonight after uh, this video I'm going to remove most of my coins from Poloniex. And you remember the video I did on Cripsy, which uh, no longer trades. But uh, on Poloniex we have about uh, 1.2 million in volume that was traded last fall whereas if we look at today you can see that Poloniex is now at 27 million. So what's the point of all this? Well 
remember that I said that they intend to steal everything. Now, Bitcoin is one of those things that they really can't steal. They can't really get into your cold wallet and take your coins. Uh, they, they can hack you, but I think the hacks are overblown. But one thing they can do is draw people into exchanges by tremendous action and tremendous profits and then collapse them and steal the money. And that's what I think may be going on. So that's something you need to be very careful about. Again, if you're going to trade Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency on an exchange, uh, if, if you're really serious about it, then you probably need to pull your coins down every night to the wallets and then put them back up. Pretty much it only allows for day trading. It certainly doesn't allow for the trading that that Chinese trader was doing because what he was doing was leaving his coins there to loan them out. So they've effectively shut down the ability to do that. And that makes perfect sense because I believe that's in their plan. They don't want to for there to be an alternative to their systems. Now let's look at the Dow industrial chart this chart is important to me because we were definitely rolling over. We had all kinds of technical sell signals that came in in the summer of 2015. We rallied and we got the same signals again at the beginning of the year with a massive drop and they've managed to pump this thing back up. Now, I believe the reason why it's so important to them to prop up the stock market we're going to see one market that's even more important than the stock market, but certainly second place is the stock market and the reason why it is so important to them to prop up this market is because they want to maintain confidence. They want to maintain the most confidence in the things that they can most rapidly steal because they plan to steal everything. Now, the ability to steal the money that is in stocks is so easy it's so simple it's it's the flip of a switch it's the press of a button and the money's gone they certainly don't have the ability to do that with physical gold or physical silver and it's much much more difficult for them to do that with cryptocurrencies so it's in their interest when they want to steal everything to encourage you to have as many of your assets that you can possibly have into the systems where they can rapidly take the money. Uh, because, and we're going to talk about this later, ultimately they want power and control over you. And specifically they want to control your ability to resist them. So let's take a look here at this story on Zero Hedge. This story was a real shocker to me. Now. If you haven't been over to my NASA moon hoax, the domain is nasamoonhoax.com. Uh, it's a site where I've done extensive exposés of NASA and all of their lies, and their lies are beyond anything. Now I'm starting to think that their lies are beyond anything we can even imagine. And uh, they probably have lied to us tenfold more than we even suspect. Uh, don't even know. But uh, if you go over to that site, I've got some stories about Elon Musk and what a scammer and crook and thief and liar and fraud Elon Musk is. Uh, he is everything about that man. He is a fraud. And uh, this is an amazing story. This is a story where they're pushing Michigan pension funds. And this is not a small amount of money. There's about $60 billion in retirement funds in the state of Michigan, and they're pushing it into Tesla stock. So let's read a little bit of this. Several days ago, we reported that as a result of ongoing financial repression and record low rates, public pensions in the U.S. are currently facing a $2 trillion funding shortfall, $4.5 trillion in assets, and $6.5 trillion in liabilities. However, the shortfall soars to as much as $8.4 trillion if one discounts the future at safe rates of return. While that may be an exaggeration, the pension shortfall, even under current actual area assumptions, is a major issue for future pension payments and one which is forcing public asset managers to take drastic steps to cut the shortfall. 
Case in point is the Michigan Department of Treasury, which, according to Detroit News, bought $48 million of shares in Tesla Motors for state retirement funds in the second quarter, increasing its shares 224% in the electric car builder. The Treasury Department's Bureau of Investments oversees investments of more than $60 billion in the state of Michigan retirement systems. That includes four systems, the Michigan Public School Employees Retirement System, Michigan State Employees Retirement System, Michigan State Police Retirement System, and Michigan Judges Retirement System. I must say that it wouldn't sadden me too much to see the judges lose all their money. The retirement funds owned 104,000 shares of Tesla as of March 30th. By the end of June, they had 339,000 shares worth $72 million, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go much farther into this story, but what a shocker. It's amazing that pension funds who have not dropped their assumed rate of return, as I covered in the last uh, video, they've not dropped their assumptions from that 7.5 to 8 percent but rather they have pushed their investments into riskier and riskier and riskier until now we're actually going into tesla and we know elon musk and solar city and everything he's done i don't even believe these these are real companies i think these are actually fake shell companies these are ponzi schemes they don't really have real products that can succeed. They're debt sinkholes. They're, they're just complete frauds. And this is where they're putting the retirement money. So again, here is more evidence that they completely intend to steal everything in a just complete uh, fraud and collapse. Not only do they intend to collapse the market, but they intend to collapse the companies that make up the market and uh, have phenomenal fraud and all the people's money is going to be gone so before we go to the a video that i wanted to cover here to talk about how important it is and why it is so essential for them to try to steal everything i wanted to take you to uh, a PDF here of I think as I mentioned before the most important market and the takeaway I want you to get from this chart is the importance of this market this is more than any of the other charts this is the biggest Ponzi the biggest bubble market and the first reason I'm gonna say that is because if you look here at the financial crisis you can see it was 0809 and if you look on this chart 0809 actually became a range expansion breakout on this chart so if you looked at just about any other chart whether it's oil stocks uh, gold and silver commodities you name it just about every other chart you can find took a major hit during that financial crisis of 2008 2009 the Great Recession, whatever you want to call it. But you can see here, that was actually, it wasn't a recession, it wasn't a depression in terms of bonds. It was just a breakout into lower yields and higher prices for bonds. So really, nothing has changed as far as the bond market is concerned. Bonds have been in a bull market since about 1981, and they are now entering a parabolic phase. How high can they go? Well, I guess they can go to zero interest rates. I'm not sure what zero interest rates are on the 30-year bond chart. Maybe it's 200. I'm not sure what the price is that equals zero interest rates on the 30-year bond. But this is definitely the big one. This, When this one goes, that is when this steal everything event occurs. And I am more and more convinced every day that that's exactly what they intend to do. Now, the big question is why do they intend to do that? And I wanted to show you a channel I just discovered today. Uh, this is a guy, he greatly impresses me. Uh, I don't agree with him on everything. I haven't even listened to much of what he says. But from what I've listened to, he's a guy who is an independent thinker. 
I think he's from Hollywood, a special effects connection people down there. He knows a lot of people from NASA. And uh, it's kind of interesting here, the latest video that he just put out here. This is something that Jennifer is into. This is something that's taking the internet by storm right now. It's actually the Flat Earth community that is going crazy on this. It's no forests on Flat Earth. It's a video by a Russian guy who is claiming that a lot of these rock formations we see are actually uh, organic. And there's a lot of good uh, arguments there. I have not listened to this video. But I wanted to introduce you to his channel. He's definitely a NASA skeptic, and uh, he's a big Trump supporter, but he's definitely an independent thinker. And uh, check out his videos. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time listening to them. But one of the things he mentioned in one of his videos was that the big reason why the powers that be want to steal everything is because they don't want you to have the money to be able to spend the time to actually analyze the world around you and the lies that you've been told. As I said, I believe the lies are probably 10 times what we think they are. Uh, as, as to the no forests on flat earth, Jennifer is completely convinced. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. You decide. I haven't had time to investigate it. But they definitely don't want you to think about things. They don't want you to think about the lies that they've told you, things like the satellites, the planets, the Hubble Space Telescope, the International Space Station, the mission to Mars. He's done great videos on that. The moon landings, the dinosaurs, the you name it. They don't want you to have the time to think about it. And what better way is there than to just simply steal everything? to take you from uh, being fairly well off or being fairly comfortable to being absolutely desperate to figure out where your next uh, meal is going to come from. According to this chart, we're roughly three times richer today than we were in 2009. Uh, do you know anyone who is three times richer than they were in 2009? I don't, unless they happen to be maybe Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. So I more than ever am convinced that this massive collapse is coming. They intend to reset the system, but before they do that, they're going to introduce the pain. They are going to take everyone's retirement. They're going to steal whatever they can in the fake gold and silver markets. They're gonna steal what is in the stock markets. They're gonna steal what's in the bond markets. They are going to steal everything. And we'll talk to you next time.